Well, I want to welcome everybody who's with us today. We'll we'll get started here. Um, my name is Ken Jasko. I'm class of 1978, and I'm the uh, chair for the alumni board. Um, I live in central New Jersey, halfway between Princeton and the ocean, so not too far. I'm actually a pastor of a church. So, uh, yeah, so we had a, a good Sunday morning. It's cold here in New Jersey, probably where a lot of you are as well. Uh, it's pretty cold. So, I, and, and I'm glad you could all join us. Uh, we do this three or four times a year. So we wanted to do one today uh, because the second semester is about to start, as you're probably aware. So we'll just share what's going on. And then we want to pray, especially for everything on this uh, second semester coming up. So uh, having said that, let's just commit this to God in prayer, right? God, we just thank you. I thank you for each alum who's here today. God, an other person who's interested in the ministry, God, we ask for your hand to be upon it. We thank you for the ministry of Christian Union, God, and, and Lord, for what you're doing among students today. God, a lot of us, we think back to the time we were there, and uh, God, we're grateful that there's a ministry like this there now. In Jesus' name, amen. I just wanted to read something I thought that was really, really beautiful. Um I got these at a used book sale. If you can see the gargoyles of Princeton University, and there's a series of these, the spires and the tigers and the trees and the gargoyles. But in the first page, I just want to read what it says. Uh, this is written by H.E. Moreau, class of 14. And so when I say 14, that's not like 10 years ago. That's 110 years ago this guy graduated. But this is a great quote. He said, here we were taught by men and Gothic towers, democracy and faith and righteousness and love of unseen things that do not die. Isn't that beautiful? We were taught the love of unseen things that do not die. And of course, righteousness and faith and, and you know, eternal morals and principles are something we're really interested in, in, uh, in of course, in this call and uh, in this ministry. So so we're excited for those who are new today. We're going to have uh, just uh, two undergrads share what's going on in their lives and on campus. We're going to have a report from Mike, who's our ministry director and a recent alum. And then we're going to pray at the end. So uh, just to give you an update. So first of all, we want to have Mike Vincent and Mike uh, is class of 2010. Uh, and this is, and Mike's a real answer to prayer. For those of you who don't know, uh, he was a leader in the ministry when he was there, and the ministry went through a real boom. Um, one year alone had over 100 students come to Christ. You heard that right, 100 students come to Christ, and then worked, worked uh, as an intern with the ministry, and then left to become a pastor, and, uh, and then just came back to uh, work on campuses a ministry fellow, and then just a couple of weeks ago, became the director of the ministry. So, Mike, we want to congratulate you on that. That was something we prayed about last time, so we're excited that you're you're there. And, uh, Mike, give us an update of what's going on campus these days. Thank you, Ken. Well, that was news to me. I don't. I, at least when I wasn't there, we didn't have 100 uh, students come to Christ in a year. Maybe that was after I was there. Oh, but, it's a year uh, after, right? Year or two after? Uh, could have been, but I, I, I'm not aware of, okay. of such a number, but we did. I remember one year we had about 40, which was very, uh, very significant. So, um, but yeah, thank you. And that's uh, news to Cynthia and Julian. So I'll ask them to just uh, keep it mum for the while. They're going to announce me as the ministry director at our ski retreat, which starts tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I should have given you guys the heads up, but um, yeah, so I'm, I'm now the director. Um yeah, well, thank you for that introduction, uh, Ken. And um, yeah, we've had uh, an amazing semester so far. Um, it's been uh, wonderful to be around these students and to see them excel and do so well and uh, to really catch the heart and the vision of, uh, of Christian Union. And, uh, and, and really, uh, so much of what I tell our students is that um, uh, if you were to boil down kind of the essence of what Christian Union is, is, is all about, um, and you can go to our website and see our, our vision and our mission statements and things like that and developing Christian leaders. Um, and uh, But why develop Christian leaders? Well, our vision is we, we desire revival. We desire a spiritually awakened America, 
a spiritually uh, alive nation, I think is our is our vision statement. And so uh, in in our microcosm of Princeton, we want to see revival. Uh, and I, I tell students that we want we're we're a revivalistic ministry. And uh, because we believe that Jesus taught us to pray, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a revival prayer. Uh, right there. We want to see God's kingdom at work. And so we're we're seeing glimpses of that. I'll throw some numbers at you just to kind of give you a sense of uh, where we are currently as a ministry. As many of you know, we took a pretty big hit in the pandemic. And so the, the following years have been kind of recovering from that. Um, but uh, so this past semester, though, we saw 85 students get involved in our Bible courses. Uh, last year, we were about 60. And so that's a pretty significant uh, increase. Uh, over last year. Um, we uh, And of that, those 85, 53 of those students are involved in one of our student ministry teams. And so that's um, like our outreach team, like our Friday night uh, large group ministry team, our worship team, uh, our socials team. We have uh, several different uh, student ministry teams. And so they're serving as leaders or members of these teams. They're getting involved and uh, and they're serving the ministry in a variety of ways and uh, and reaching out to campus. Um, we had about 100 gospel exposures. Um, a gospel exposure, that's a metric just to say that um, 100 times, at least, we uh, have shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, some meaningful gospel content has been distributed to another person on campus. And so whether that is a book distribution, and maybe Julian will tell a little bit about that later, uh, whether that is testifying uh, to other people, whether that's one-on-one -on -one conversations, whether that's leading someone to Christ. Um, Cynthia gave that update last time on leading another student to Christ. Um, those are the variety of ways, um, and then there's many other uh, uh, ways in which we share the gospel uh, with other students on campus. Uh, and we're looking to increase that number pretty radically this next semester, and so we're looking forward to that as well. We had uh, over 250 hours of student prayer and those are just the ones we can count. We have no idea uh, all the other hours that students might gather together on their own or and pray together or things like that. These are the things we count in terms of our uh, daily noon prayer meeting um, primarily and a few other select prayer events uh, that we know are happening. Um, and so if five students gather together and pray for an hour, that's five hours of student prayer. Uh, and then we had 55 days of student fasting. And, uh, and so we teach our students to fast as well, that this is another way that God has given us to draw near to him and, uh, and to seek him for his will. And so, um, so 55 days. And so getting uh, young adults to miss a meal is a hard thing. And so uh, I think it's especially powerful to see uh, so many young adults seeking the Lord in this way. Um, we had lots of uh, special guest speakers at our Friday night lecture series, uh, which we call Encounter. And uh, that's been going strong. We had our highest attendances this past semester uh, since the pandemic. I think even since uh, the year before the pandemic, uh, I think it had been kind of a slump. We saw several, uh, I think three different nights this year hit 70 in attendance on a Friday night, which is phenomenal. Last year, our average was about 30, 35. And so uh, about doubling that uh, on a few nights this year, which has been great. Um, Guess, I mean, I've spoken, some of our staff has spoken, uh, as well as some local pastors, uh, some visiting theologians, and some other special guests that we've gotten to come in and speak for us that have really blessed and edified the students. Um, we had our executive team leadership uh, training meeting, and uh, where we teach our top leaders, the leaders of all our student ministry teams, basic principles of leadership, biblical principles, um, but that are also leadership principles that they can carry with them into their futures. Maybe they're not going into ministry directly. Maybe they're going into business. Maybe they're going into uh, the marketplace. Maybe they're going into medicine, whatever they're going into. Um, there's all kinds of great leadership principles that the Bible teaches us. And so uh, spent a number of hours going through those principles and how they can influence others in a godly way and grow their teams and inspire their teams. And uh, and so our, we've seen our leadership grow uh, in that regard. And uh, it's so great. I, I always love uh, being part of those meetings and teaching those things and have being part of those discussions and seeing students really grasp those concepts uh, and then begin to put them into practice. That's a real joy for me. Um, and then some other updates. Uh, of, I, I can't give firm dates or, or updates, but we are in the, the process of hiring uh, two new staff. And uh, my, my, with, uh, the buzz that I'm getting is that we are nearing completion on that, although I can't give final dates, but that we should have a, a, a full-time men's ministry fellow 
uh, hopefully soon, hopefully this semester, and then a part-time uh, women's ministry fellow coming on uh, soon. Because for the past uh, couple of years now, it's just been myself and Quinn, who's our, our women's ministry fellow. So I've been handling all the men's Bible courses. Quinn's been handling all the women's. And so um, this is very needed as we're growing and expanding as a ministry, which is great. And we need the staffing as well. And uh, and so that means some funding is returning to the ministry as well as people are recovering from the pandemic. And so uh, for those of you on this call who donate, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for your partnership, for your financial support, for your prayer support for this ministry. It means the world uh, to us, to these students, uh, to be able to have um, people on campus who can lead them, who can bless them, who can pray for them. Uh, there's, there's so many ministries um, uh, I can think of out there that uh, they'll be student led and there's and there's uh, great things can be accomplished with a student led ministry, but they often just don't have the staying power uh, and often don't have the sticking power of handing off leadership, especially. And uh, so oftentimes you'll have a student ministry that will do wonderful things, but they'll last about four years and uh, and then students will graduate. So having staff that are full time that are paid and that are there for the students um, year in and year out is is so wonderful. And uh, it's great to be part of a ministry that really values that. And so thank you so much for your partnership in that. Um, Christian Union, as you know, we don't only just do campus ministries. Uh, that's one of the main branches of what we do, but we also do things to stir up national revival. And so CU America is another branch of what we do. And we just are finishing tomorrow a 21-day fast. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about that or have been a part of it. Or a lot of churches do it on, you know, on their own uh, the first of the year anyways. And so um, so I've been doing that and really praying for and would encourage you all to pray for our ski safari. Ski safari is our annual winter retreat, and it starts tomorrow. We are leaving shortly afternoon tomorrow. And um, Julian and, and Cynthia will be going as well as we've got 31 students uh, going this year, which is up from 20 last year. So again, uh, about 50% growth uh, this year in, in most of our categories, which is phenomenal. Um, and so Ski Safari is always a, a powerful time. We'll be up for the week. We'll come back on, on Saturday. Uh, we've got a couple of great guest speakers who are going to be ministering to the students. And so we're just praying for a powerful time, a transformative time. Uh, this is a time where for some students, this is maybe the first sort of Christian retreat that they've ever done. Um, and time away, time seeking the Lord, time uh, in the word, time listening to great talks on the gospel and the power of God and uh, and seeking him for his kingdom. And so this can really be a transformative time in the life of a student. And so if you would uh, pray, uh, be praying this week as often as you think about it, pray for these students uh, who are going to be with us on this retreat, um, that it would it would mark them and and uh and transform them in a great way and uh, so i'm really excited uh, and have been praying up for 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 this and so and then uh, last but not least this is uh at ski safari this is where we have our uh student leadership transition uh of our uh exec team so our our, or our officers so our officers uh we've had four officers which is a little bit of a vestige of uh, older time in, of ministry and they lead our exec team which is all the ministry team leaders of all the various teams. And so Cynthia was one of our previous officers. She is a senior, so she is an outgoing uh, officer. And so we've been so blessed and thankful for her leadership uh, in the ministry. And uh, and so now we're going, because we're a little bit smaller now, now we're going down to two officers uh, leading the team. And one of them is our other guest here, Julian, uh, has just been uh, named president of the ministry. We'll be announcing him. Uh, and there's uh, another young lady, Janice, who will be joining him as vice president. We'll be announcing them tomorrow night. Uh, and so I'm expecting much celebration and fanfare as well as Thanksgiving for the pre for the previous officers as well. We'll be praying for them and uh, yeah, transitioning into new uh, student leadership as well. And so that's always a fun time. And so then our, our officers, we give them a lot of responsibility and they'll be selecting their next executive team and the people to lead all these other teams and ensuring that our ministry is running smoothly and doing great and bold things for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Um, our theme for Ski Safari is Kingdom Come. And so we're really excited about that and uh, really infusing the values of seeing God's kingdom come to earth uh, into these students. And so, um, yeah, you can be praying for that. And again, thank you so much for your prayer support and financial support for this ministry. And that's it for me. Thank you so much, Michael. Next, we have a, a student testimony. And uh, Julian Lim is from uh, Jersey City, New Jersey, is an econ major and is a junior. Julian, uh, tell us what God's doing in your life and from your perspective on campus. 
Yeah, we'll do. I'm at four percent my my uh computer, so if it just turns off, I'm gonna go on my phone and then I'll pick it up from there. But <clears throat> yeah, I guess um one one verse. I guess I'll start with the verse because I really feel like God's been um living out this verse in my life right now, and it's John fifteen fifteen. No longer do I call you servants, for servants do not know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends for all that I've heard from my father made known to you. And so I guess in this season of my life, personally, it's it's really been about living in that intimacy of friendship with God, right? To know God as a father, as a savior, but to also know God as as a friend. And I've been um, just really um, growing in the Lord in that in that way, just seeking his kingdom, right? Seeking his purpose and his will and how uh, how awesome it feels that he's included me in this in this uh in this great plan this great mystery he has for the redemption of the world that he sees me worthy enough to to you know use me and so i guess uh, i could share just a quick testimony about what's kind of started this and has also just started a a, a phase of revival in my life um so like mike mentioned like a lot of churches do the the prayers during the beginning of the year so i was going into the season of prayer really or prayer and fasting asking god um you know, it's it's always been my dream to do a startup. Like I feel deep in my soul and in my spirit, like this is what I'm called to do. This is what I was made for. I've been excited about a startup, a technology startup um, for a year. It's, it's all I could really think about. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go into this season of prayer and fasting, asking, asking God for a startup idea. <laughs> hmm. And so um, maybe a couple of weeks before, before this season of prayer and fasting, um, my brother was on the phone call with one of his his mentors. And so when I walk into the room and I kind of interrupt their call, um, the mentor says, oh, I want to talk to Julian. And so I start talking to his mentor. Um, and the mentor pretty much prophesies to me. He's like, God sees you running a technology startup. Hmm. And so the guy I never met before and, and prophesies my, my dream right to me. And hmm. so, you know, from that from that experience, it's it's just it's had so many spillover effects. Um, but it's one one thing that sticked with me is how awesome is it that God actually put in these desires in my heart before I even knew it was really from him. I mean, it's like, I, I kind of knew, right. Cause I, I really feel it. And I try to submit and live my life according to his will, but just having it confirmed that, you know, that wasn't just some desire that was God designing me right for this generation, designing me for this time to be impactful for his kingdom. Right. So that, that was one thing that was blew my mind. Um, another thing is that I think it, it's really disciplined my walk right? God has this high calling, this high purpose on my life. And so how could I be frivolous with my time, right? Like if, if I, you know, you know, this is God's promise to me, but it's up to me to kind of keep my end, right? How can I scroll on TikTok? How could I play video games and do all these things when, you know, there's this great calling, right? And this great partnership and friendship with God, right? And so it's been disciplining. It's also, I've understand that the level of sacrifice, like we all pray for sacrifice or we all pray for revival and we want great things to happen. But I, I think the Lord was really saying, okay, yeah, these things happen. And I've, I've kind of called you out, right? I want you to sacrifice for it. And so, um, I don't mean to say this to boast or, or anything, but just to kind of share you a testimony, I just finished a seven day fast, a water only fast. Mm. Um, and it was, it was awesome. God, God's grace was with me. Uh, I definitely couldn't do it on my own. I never thought I could do anything like that. Um, but the Lord is just, I think, been calling me into a, a deeper place of sacrifice, commitment. And um, it, it, I really think it, it's it, like that scripture I read is, you know, being friends with God, you know, it's, it's something that's just been empowering me and bolding me to you know, really um, love him and his work and to work with him in, in pursuit of it. So, that's a little bit about what's been going on in my heart, my testimony. You know, I'm really excited. You know, Mike mentioned, um, yeah, I got president, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, but just will just keeping this the seeking God, right? And and wanting his kingdom to come and being surrendering to him in all things and um really, you know, losing my life for the sake of his kingdom, I know that that that's a, a cause worthwhile, right? And uh I really look forward to walking God in friendship, right? Working together with God to to see that happen at Princeton. Hmm. Um, so that's that's just been on my heart a lot, and it's been a really great um period of personal re revival for me. Um, and then I guess Mike Mike mentioned, but I also led the outreach team prior to to this, and so maybe this is now transitioning to more Princeton related stuff. But with the outreach team, we did do a book drive, a book initiative. So we 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 bought um 
Frank Turek's book called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. It's a kind mm-hmm. of a Antigon, Antigon, uh, a kind of a jarring title for, I guess, an unbeliever. But, you know, we were out there in, in First Campus Center um, handing out books for a couple hours. And so I thought it was a it was a really great moment um, for the team, for the outreach team, and in general, you know, we were out there trying to hand people books who want nothing to do with us, and you know, kind of just walk right right by us, and you know, how do you react and how do you hold yourself in that kind of situation? So there's a lot of practical things we learned about evangelism, like you know, mm-hmm. hold introduction, you know, how do you how do you uh, even say hi to the person, how do you start the conversation? But there's also just this growing hunger that we want to be bold, we want to be in front of people. And we're willing to even sometimes look foolish or whatever for 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 God's sake. Um, so that that event was was awesome. I think we handed out like a ton of books. Um, we were there for a long time. Everyone it was there, about eighty. Eighty books. Yeah, we handed out eighty books. Um, everyone was having a great time. Um, and really growing. I think on on so many different fronts. So, I I know God is doing great things at Princeton, and um, I can't think that there I I know in 24 there there's going to be more so um I guess that's that's all for me good thank you thank you so much Julian um I just wanted to say a few words about Christian Union for those who aren't aware of it and I would encourage you by the way if you haven't done this to visit Christian Union's website it's being extensively redesigned and also um the ministry is looking at really upgrading its social media presence, but I'm just going to read the one sentence on the uh, intro that I think sums it up. Since 2002, and that means this is the Christian Union's 20th anniversary, and of course, we know it started at Princeton. Christian Union's work to bring sweeping spiritual change to America. The ministry's work is focused in two areas, developing bold Christian leaders at the most strategic and profoundly influential universities in America and building networks of Christian leaders and promoting national revival through Christian Union America. So what that translates into, Christian Union is only on the Ivy League schools and I believe Stanford and Harvard Law School. So, and, and, you know, we all as people associated with Princeton obviously have a strong interest in Princeton, but I think you know there's been a lot of a lot of discussion in the media and the public forum about what's going on in the Ivy League schools in the last uh since October. And it's drawn a lot of attention. And I think I think the bottom line is we need to put get more more gospel, more Christianity, more Jesus into these schools. So mm-hmm. that's basically if I had to sum it up, I know that's a very uh simple view but that's really the goal to advance the kingdom to spread the gospel at those schools and uh, mike did you put can you put up the slide there i just want to encourage everybody also you know as as alums or people who are out um you know what our goal as alums my goal as an alum is to support the ministry obviously i'm not there but uh, my my goal is to support the ministry through prayer. So I would encourage you to really pray regularly for the ministry, and we'll be praying at the end here. Uh, but just to keep it in prayer, uh, because the you know for those of us who are alums, those students were us a couple of years ago, maybe five, ten, forty, fifty. Uh, you know, we have someone here, two two guys who are alums, sixty, just had their sixtieth reunion. And we mm-hmm. want to reach out to them. So I just encourage you to keep it in prayer regularly and to give. I mean, I'll just share my personal philosophy financially. You know, the university has more money than than it, it's got so much money. But I think what's really needed for me, in my view anyway, is to direct the money towards towards the things of the gospel. And really, so I give to Christian Union. Uh, I just give a token amount to Princeton, but uh, anyway, but I, I give significantly to the Christian Union. And I'd encourage you to become, as they call it, a cornerstone partner. So uh, you can you can take shoot the QR code there and just look on the website. So that's a little about Christian Union. All right, moving on here, we have a second student testimony. We have Cynthia Makachi, and she is from uh, also from New Jersey and in the uh, School of Public and International Affairs 
And for those of us who are old timers, that used to be called the Woodrow Wilson School. And Woodrow Wilson fell into um, ignominy due to, I think you all know what happened. So he's he's not uh, highlighted as much anymore. But anyway, the school is still, still there. So Cynthia, and Cynthia is a senior about to make the big step out of the Ivy Gates into the real world, right? So Cynthia, just tell us about your experience at Princeton. Thank you for being with us again. Yes, of course. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Cynthia. Um, yeah, I guess um, concerning the just a general testimony um, for my life um, this semester or going into this semester and continuing on. Um, yeah, I'd probably characterize like the start of the semester as also like a time of, I guess, yeah, revival in my life or with my walk with the Lord. Um, and yeah, I guess like elaborating on that more of just like I, unlearning, um, approaching like my relationship with the Lord as like a religion or like as culture, but really seeing it as like, um, yeah, I guess like as Julian said, like a friendship, like like as treating like pursuing the Lord and and, and sharing my life with Him as as something um, very intimate. Yeah, I think the Lord has been really teaching me about um, intimacy and then also just honesty with Him um, from the start of the semester. Um, so that was just yeah, like my summer and then start of the semester. Um, I'm learning, um, yeah, seeing it as religion, but more as a relationship. Um, and then really seeing like, or finding that the semester was kind of the test of like maintaining that um, as things got busy with school. Um, and then also the new, I guess, concerns about like, what am I gonna do after Princeton? Like, am I gonna do grad school? Am I gonna pursue um, something in the workforce? Uh, and um, yeah, really like, uh, learning how to invite God into all of that um, and not in a way that like I felt like oh I have to do this because I'm a Christian but being like no Lord like I'm inviting you to, inviting you into this because I trust you and I know you care about me and that you hold my future in your hands and um, and I want um, to share with you my concerns and, and my desires and 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 really walk with you walk with you in that um, in the every day um, so yeah with that um, also spent the semester learning what it means to, to count the cost, I guess, in a new way. Um, and elaborating on that of like, uh, what it means to actually like, I guess, represent Christ in the everyday. Um, so not just telling someone that I'm a believer, but actually like looking to see how the Lord leads me and, and sharing the gospel with them or um, yeah, being bold to, to tell someone that I'm praying for them or being bold to, to see other ways that I can share Christ's love to other people. and. And yeah, I guess like, um, yeah, yeah, really felt the challenge and like of unlearning and and um, denying my flesh um, and, and and different aspects. Um, yeah, I think. Um, sorry, <laughs> my brain's blanking. Um, yeah, I think an aspect of like learning how to love people even when it's it's difficult. Um, um I don't know okay wait I'm so sorry I I think I'm I'm psyching myself out I'm a little nervous um hmm. yeah I'm sorry um <laughs> I don't know how to um yeah I guess yeah to be to be very honest like um yeah learning how to love learning how to declare that I have joy when I'm stressed about school or like there's a lot of things to be anxious about um, realizing that, um, that like, yeah, choosing joy, choosing peace, like, like, yeah, as I said, it's a choice, like, it's a decision I have to make in my mind, um, not just, like, I guess, going with my flesh, because my flesh wants, oh, I found out my flesh does really want to be anxious or worried or, or disgruntled, um, but um, I have the ability to choose joy because God has been faithful in the past, so realizing that, like, because God has been faithful in the past, like, I should apply those truths to now um and yeah i guess definitely um a praise um that i can give to god is like how much joy i've had this semester as well just like naturally um i think that's the first time i've ever really had a lot of um joy throughout my time at princeton that felt very genuine so i knew that was from god um and and in that new joy and um also felt just found a lot of um yeah i guess yeah freedom to to then choose peace um and 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 choose love and um yeah even when things were difficult throughout the semester with figuring out what the next steps were 
Um, and then, yeah, so that's just like a little Snapchat. I'm sorry my brain blanked in the middle of that, but I think I'll just transition now um, to what I've been seeing the Lord doing overall on Princeton's campus. And what's been pretty cool is also seeing that like desire to really understand and what it means to live out the gospel every day. Um, I was really inspired and encouraged by different conversations I had with other believers on campus um, about like really feeling the urge of like, um, yeah, knowing what it what it means to to really um, care about the souls around us that that, that don't know God, um, and really feeling that burden uh, to share the gospel in in a new way, because um, I think that um, a lot of us realize that we were kind of getting I guess comfortable in our own walks and like our our, our own circles of like oh like you know I've kind of figured out like my walk with the Lord now and, and figured out like um, yeah I guess how to encourage others who are who are also believers, but then forgetting that we're also called to share the gospel to those who don't know it and who are walking in the darkness um so really feeling that just general call not just within myself but with others um that that we want to do something um do more um to to really just shine christ's light on campus um yeah and as julian mentioned one of those ways was through like the book giveaway um we also able were uh we also were able to partner with um um other um faith groups on campus and Julian was able to like share um, his testimony at like an open mic night and then I and another a member of our community was able to um, yeah just sing a song about like um, yeah Christ uh, being crucified for us and, and making a way um, for us to to know him and to to no longer be slaves to sin and and and, and death and 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 suffering um, and that was just a really cool time just seeing others who um, who had different walks of faith still respond um to to the gospel as, as rightly so and of course um yeah uh so that was really cool and yeah so i think overall i've just been really encouraged by um realizing that um that yeah like the light like the walk that we have with christ is, is so life-giving and so worth it to 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 really deny yourself of, of what the world um kind of is declaring in in contrast with that i um, and seeing that like as you choose christ and and as you, you know, make sacrifices um, or um, decisions according to the gospel, like that there's so much life and, and truth declared from that. And then also seeing that, like, I'm not the only one on campus who's been stirred to, to really pursue the Lord in, in a way that that is um, sacrificial, in a way that is really declaring that Christ is first. Um, like, I've been so encouraged to, to see others have that that passion. And and I think, yeah, going into ski Fire and going into the semester, like, um, I'm very excited to see what the Lord is doing because uh, it's definitely something new. Like, I guess so weird that I'm in my last semester. So I've seen many semesters at Princeton, um, but just really being able to see like the number of, of believers that are that are really committed um, and really hungry to, to see the Lord move and, and to see his will be done on campus. Like just seeing how great a number that there are now in comparison to, to before. Um, like I'm very excited just to see how God's going to continue moving this semester and the semesters after of just yeah spreading his kingdom on campus um yeah and I think that's all I have to share again so sorry for the pause um but yes hey Cynthia uh, before you go off go back on I got two questions for you um number one since you're a senior we got to know what your thesis is and number mm -hmm. two what what are your uh current best as you know plans for what you're going to do because graduation is really not all that far away what are your current plans yes so concerning my thesis which is what i've been thinking about a lot um is <laughs> um the topic is um concerning uh homelessness um and like the route to the right to housing and shelter um in new york city and paris france um so i've i've been um <clears throat> doing research uh, concerning just like the state of homelessness um, in New York and, and in Paris and how it's been increasing, even though in both New York and Paris, they have these rights uh, for people, but it's it's still not really um, improving the situation and looking into why that may be so. And then also at the end, I'll um, be proposing, um, hopefully like, uh, um, um, how do I say? Um, yeah, I guess new strategies that will be able to aid uh, those in, in policy making. Um, yeah, so that's involved like some travel and some interviews that have been very informative. And yeah, um, yeah, and I guess transitioning from that, 
Um, I'm very passionate about serving communities in need, um, specifically uh, youth communities. Uh, so after Princeton, I will be spending two years in the Teach for America um, fellowship program. Um, and I'll be based in Houston, uh, yeah, teaching high school. Yeah, either either middle school or high school English um, for, for students uh, who need more support um, and just, yeah, advocating for educational um, equity. Um, yes, and then after those two years, God willing, I will go to law school. Um, <laughs> yeah, just to continue um, in in supporting uh, communities in need. Um, but yeah, that's a little little snapshot of what's been going on concerning thesis and graduation. Yeah, that's fantastic, Cynthia. And I believe uh, wasn't Teach Teach for America was uh, started by a Princeton alum, right? Right behind me, Wendy Cop, wasn't that her name? Yep, that's her name. Yeah, so uh, so that's great. Thank you, thank you. Okay, next we have a, a, a sharing by one of our uh, one of our alumni board members who's a relatively recent grad. Now, uh, Betsy, it may seem like a long time ago. She graduated. It'll be 14, 13 and a half years ago. But to those of us who are older alums, right, who graduated forty, we've got two people who graduated sixty years ago. You know, you you just graduated, but but Betsy uh, serves on our alumni board. Uh, is and uh, is a doctor down in the Washington D.C. area. So Betsy, you want to just share your experience as a relatively recent alum with us? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I really wanted to highlight two things that I feel like Christian Union um, really kind of like prepared me well. Kind of looking back on it now, like almost fifteen years later. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was that I feel like for me, Christian Union was really. Um, one of my first experiences of having like really authentic peer group Christian community. Um, just a little bit about me. I grew up in a Christian household um, that uh, lived in Orlando for a period of time, but then we moved to Los Angeles and my family was involved in our church, but there were like no peers my age in my church <laughs> or in my school. Um, and so I felt like I was really walking my faith alone. Um, and my first year of Princeton, um, I was in the same era as Mike, um, meeting the women from my home group. Um, they like really became like kind of my first experience of what it's like to have like peer Christian community to hold you accountable in your like daily life. Um, and really made kind of walking the faith a lot more like personal and real. Um, I really liked what someone said earlier about like making it about like a relationship and not a religion. I think that that um, really had like a substantial role for me there. I think that those women were kind of my um, uh, really big support network um, at Princeton. But um, now that we're all 15 years older, I feel like as I reflect over the past 15 years, those women were essential for me as I was thinking about who would be the person I would marry and whether or not that relationship would be a relationship that would draw me closer to the Lord. Um, as I was thinking about big questions about like, which church community did we want to join and how we serve in that church community? Um, when we faced really hard things like parents passing away or divorce or critical illness, those have been kind of the first people that I've called about um, praying for me and seeking the Lord's wisdom. And um, while I've been so fortunate and grateful to have other strong Christian communities that I've developed along the way, mainly because I kind of learned the importance of it with Christian Union, I think that um, it's easy to think about those relationships as being something that is just for college, but I think it's really something that's lifelong. And um, I think that uh, there's something unique about um, being surrounded by fellow Princetonians that also love the Lord. Um, I think of one of my really good friends who's an ICU nurse and I'm an infant ICU doctor and we're able to connect like instantly about kind of the challenges that we have at work. Um, and the challenges we have about learning how to be a mother and a parent and a partner um, and all of those kind of life changes that come up. Um, and then I think that second thing that I really wanted to highlight is that um, I feel like Christian Union really taught me how to be a light for Christ in a place that might not be as open to Christ. So I know that um, here, like the Ivy League is a really hard place. Not everybody's 
a Christian. And I think that the skills I learned kind of sharing the gospel with my friends there um, who weren't Christian, um, I've been able to carry into my career. I work at an Ivy League institution now in a field that is wrought with challenges about the value of life. And um, I think that um, kind of the skills I've learned over time through Christian Union have really only been to grow and develop. And now I feel like I'm able to help mentor other medical students or folks that I see um, that are kind of facing the same things. And I think that um, that was something that like really, um, I think Christian Union like kind of planted the seed in um, helping me develop. And it's um, really exciting to see that um, my friends that are teachers or work in business, um, I see them kind of navigating that and doing the same thing. Um, so um, I don't know, I guess I'll, just to kind of like take it all home, I feel like um, I really seen throughout my life and career and growing, even seeing my coup as my year at Princeton now, like being the ministry director, um, it just sees that, like I really see a clear demonstration of how the investment mm -hmm. in Christian union that they've made in us has really spread out to seeing like, God's gospel be preached in like so many different industries, in so many different places, in so many different levels and ways, like in people's individual families and how they're like working and living their career. Um, and that's just like really exciting for me to see and is really honestly what makes me so passionate about staying involved in Christian Union because I know what a difference it made for me. And I know that it's... Um, just such a good way to invest in the next generation to spread the gospel to the world. Thank you so much, Betsy. So uh, excellent, excellent. So we wanted to spend a little time praying for Princeton. Um, so a couple of things I just wanted to mention as highlights to keep in mind for prayer. Obviously, the ski trip, that's a, a big uh, a big event for the ministry and also outreach. There are students who come there who are spiritually seeking so uh that's that's something we want to keep in prayer we want to keep in prayer for new officers um that will be chosen and also that they'll really um do a great job we want to pray for the new staff and i i just wanted to highlight what mike said i think it's a great thing so we are going from two full-time staff to three and a half staff so um in the, in the immediate future as the ministry has grown. And of course we want to see that. So we want to pray that they'll get adjusted well, fit in. And then also we want to pray for freshmen, uh, freshmen who are coming. And on this call, by the way, I'm pleased we have, we have two uh, potential freshmen um, who are Christians uh, with us right now. And uh, we want to pray that God draws the people who he would have there at Princeton. Um, you know, we we know the admissions office proposes, but God disposes, right? So uh, so let's just pray for that. And I want to also just give a shout out, by the way, and I know this wasn't planned, but uh, right in the middle of my screen is Joe Basulka. Joe, you want to raise your hand, wave? And Joe is a parent. Joe, uh, if you want to unmute, I just want to ask you to say a quick something. So he's a parent of a new student at Princeton, class of 27. And he has a burden is getting together with other parents uh, to pray for students. So Joe, just give us a 30 second summary of what you're doing. Sure. Uh, when we were exploring Princeton a year ago now, I reached out to Dr. Robbie George in the uh, uh, law department. He was the only Christian I knew of uh, on the faculty and and asked him if there were um, any parents getting together in any uh, capacity to pray for their students and the school and what have you. And um, when he told me there was nothing like that, uh, I then met uh, several other Christian parents who thought uh, we should uh, take the plunge. Uh, I created a post on the Princeton Parents Facebook page. And long story short, we're up to uh, 148 parents and counting and um, just wanting to be another source of uh, support for uh, the Christian presence on campus and wanting to get back to uh, the great roots that uh, this can uh, campus has uh, had in terms of uh, fostering the kingdom. Great. 
That's fantastic, Joe. We're excited about you doing that. Really are. So, and Joe, I'm wondering if you could uh, pray after after uh, Bob Connor's going to kick us off. Um, Bob, by the way, was my college roommate, uh, oh. but he has some stories which uh, will remain secret, Bob, forever, right? Because I have stories on you too. But Bob, after he graduated, was a university trustee. I think you know that each year one uh, graduate is elected as trustee. And uh, Bob was the guy. And so uh, Bob's going to lead us off. And Joe, if you could pray. And then uh, anybody else who wants to follow, okay? So just lift up these things. Go ahead, Bob. Father God, we thank you for the for your grace. We thank you for all you do and who you are. Thank you for this opportunity to learn about what you are doing today at Princeton and elsewhere through, through universities, Father God. We give you thanks for the hope there. I pray that you give grace to the current students and endurance to uh, run the race that are these four years and, and continue to give them uh, grace and wisdom. We lift up to you this uh, ski trip, the safari, Father God, and pray that indeed your kingdom would come through this. It would come in people's lives and it would be a blessing and that your uh, Holy Spirit would show up there. We, Lord God, we, we ask for your hand upon the new officers, some of whom may be intimidated, but you, you supply the grace and wisdom, Father God, to fulfill your kingdom. And we just lift them up to you and also the new staff. Pray that they would be a blessing. We bind up any opposition that would be to them, and we just pray that your hand would be upon them to further your kingdom. And may your hand be upon freshmen who are making decisions as to where to go. And for everybody on this call that has decisions as to what to do next, that you would whisper in their ear and guide them to further your kingdom. And again, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you as a friend and for our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. Joe, Joe, are you still with us? I I don't see him. I wonder if he cut out. So for whatever reason. All right. Who else would like to pray? I want to ask Susan Griffith, and and she is with us from the UK today. Susan, uh, I know you're there. Could you uh, could, would you mind praying for us? You're muted too. She's a professor at Oxford, by the way, right yeah, now. Not professor. The professor okay. is used for like chair okay, of the department. A, what are, what's your official title? Uh, I'm the course coordinator for the MTH in Applied Theology, and I also teach patristics, so early church history. I am do, you know, I lecture, I do tutorials, which is the, the main way of teaching. But yeah, professor in, in the UK system, it's saved for like the, you know, the untouchables. Anyway, um. So I just want to thank you. I want to give a little shout out to Vince Naiman, who was my RA freshman year. Um, mm -hmm. So good to see you on the call, Vince. And uh, thank you. I want to especially thank the students for your testimony. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Our son was admitted early to Princeton, but he's waiting to see um, the, what's happening in the UK. So that's uh, that's uh, that's kind of his story right now. So he's not on the call, but my husband and I are. Father God, we lift up the ministry of Christian Union, but also, Lord, we lift up all the Christian um, ministries at Princeton, and we thank you for the ways they can work together, they can pray together. Lord, we pray that your blessing of revival and renewal and um, uh, just deepening of roots uh, in in your love, that their, the, the, the students' roots would go down deep into the love of God during their time at Princeton, that they would drink deeply of your love, and that they would um, grow uh, strong and uh, in that love, strong in truth and strong in um, their ability to uh, connect and relate to the world and to those around them. Lord, we pray for uh, revival. We pray, Lord, I, I think of those early morning prayer meetings in Murray Dodge. Uh, Ken remembers 
and how we prayed for outpouring to come. And Lord, I thank you that we see the fruit of some of those prayers. Um, and we pray for more, Lord, if there are 10% of Princeton students this uh, semester are in Bible studies with some Christian group uh, that's faithful to you or another, Lord, we pray that next year it'd be 20%. Lord, we pray that they would just increase, that you would add and that you would equip each of the students to also lead and be be have spheres of influence in their dorms, in their um, uh, residential colleges, Lord, that you would equip each of them to understand that they have a sphere of influence around them and that that influence would be for Jesus and for um, the kingdom. And Father God, I pray that you would raise them up, Lord, because where more are coming in, you need more um, people to uh, explain the scripture and explain uh, how to live a Christian life and just to be there for each other. So I pray you would equip um, in each of these students in Christian Union and in uh, the other fellowship groups. Father, we pray for Christian, uh, someone mentioned Robbie George, uh, mm -hmm. we pray for Christian uh, professors and members of staff, Lord, Christians who are working in the kitchens, kitchen, mm -hmm. Christians that are working in the library, wherever they are, Lord, we pray that um, they would um, also be blessed, that they would also experience revival and renewal. And we mm -hmm. pray for um, that outpouring to go beyond just the students, Lord, into, not just, but beyond the students, to um, all aspects of the university's life and work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Joe Basuka, I think you, you, you're, you cut out, but go ahead. Why don't you pray for us, too? Father, thank you for this privilege of gathering together uh, and recognizing how um, your grand story uh, links with each of ours uh, mm -hmm. and connects us in this tapestry and uh, in this family uh, rich uh, with every tribe, tongue, and nation represented. When we think of the state of the university in this day and age, um, uh, we know that uh, uh, on the one hand, we're on enemy territory in terms of uh, reflecting on uh, the clash of worldviews and uh, perspectives in terms of what your lordship implies for uh, the day to day. And yet, uh, I think of um, Brother Ken's work in reflecting on the rich Christian history at Princeton and, mm -hmm. uh, and keenly aware of the fact that um, your uh, rule and reign will persist regardless of what um, uh, the, the dark forces will try to do uh, in, um, uh, in competition uh, to that rightful rule. So Lord, may that be so at every level of what uh, happens on uh, this campus. Um, for our, um, our staff, uh, as was just prayed for, uh, whether in the classroom or outside the classroom, may they um, bear your fruit uh, in rich and, and compelling ways to, to draw folks to where uh, life is found in you. Um, for our students to, to walk in such a way that uh, they are eager to, uh, to learn deeply uh, and to be good students of what competing worldviews are out there, and then doing so in a way where uh, they can uh, take every thought captive, as we're told uh, by our brother Paul in the New Testament, uh, and yet doing so with gentleness and respect uh, and modeling what it means to, uh, to walk um, uh, with dignity and with trust that ultimately you are the one that will reach hearts at the end of the day. Uh, but we thank you for the ways in which you use us as your vessels. And um, reflecting on my own uh, reading this month, uh, and this week uh, on, on the Joseph story and uh, and then uh, parallel time in the New Testament and the book of Mark and recognizing how Joseph is just one of many uh, of our forefathers in the Old Testament that were shadows and, and um, prefiguring what uh, ultimately Christ uh, means in terms of his um, conquering of sin and death and all the implications that follow with that, with uh, restoration to come. So, 
whether it's the, the script ski safari this week uh, or it's with the other activity coming up in this next semester, uh, may Christian Union and the other Christian groups on campus be uh, beacons uh, that are interconnected and places where folks uh, will recognize the, the emptiness of uh, wisdom, mm -hmm. riches, and strength outside mm -hmm. of uh, uh, your um, rightful ownership of all of it, uh, and that um, uh, the campus will indeed will know your people by their love for you uh, and their love for others. Mm -hmm. We pray this all uh, in the great name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. And God, we, we just agree together, God, you've called us to make disciples. God, we pray for the ministry on campus and the other ministers as well, that they will make many disciples, God, people with a Christian worldview, with a com radical commitment to Jesus Christ, God, who will who will go out and spread your gospel and, and reflect the life of Jesus in whatever profession or occupation they, they enter. God, we just thank you for this. Thank you for each person who shared today. God, we look forward to what you're going to do this upcoming semester. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just a couple quick things before we go for you to know. Um, February 24th is Alumni Day. And uh, if you're going to be there, let me know. I'll be there. A couple of us are going to be there. We'll get together, right? So, uh, so, so that'll be I went last year. It was a knockout, by the way. Um, a day of activities, talks. It was really a free lunch. Yes, there is such a thing as a free quality lunch paid for by Princeton for, I would say, I think there were, a, they said about 1,500 people in Jadwin Gym. Big. Uh, so, but uh, we'd love to meet everybody, meet there. So that'll be then. And then if you're coming back for, re and by the way, I don't know if you know this, but the Alumni Weekly has talked about Princeton is trying to do more events for alumni outside of reunions. So uh, the Orange and Black Day in the fall had a significant turnout also, and Alumni Day, and then they're doing affinity conferences and all kinds of other things. So they're trying to expand past just reunions. But uh, uh, reunions, which uh, is May 24th, and for the last several years, we've brought in a well-known Christian alum and given a lecture, and we had a great response last year. Um, uh, the people come who are alumni to reach out to alumni. So uh, we're going to do that again. This May 24th is Reunions Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, in a location to be determined and with a speaker to be determined. But we wanted to get someone who would be of general interest to alumni. So we're working on that as well. Uh, we'll have another update at the end of uh, the semester, so probably around June-ish, and just keep looking, watching over your emails, we'll let you know for that as well. And I just wanted to mention, if anybody wants to have any further uh, involvement in the ministry, Christian Union, we're always looking for help in different ways. Uh, it's not very time-consuming, but uh, if you're interested in that, uh, let let me know, okay? And uh, I think that's about it. Well, we wanted to bring this in in under an hour, and it's exactly six o'clock. Um, I know we got a couple of people from UK. I think in UK it's midnight. Am I correct? So, uh, or something like that. It's eleven. Eleven yeah. o'clock. Five. Well, that's still pretty late. So, uh, yeah. So, everybody, thank you for being with us today, and have a great night. God bless you all.